failure of governance at the board level has been blamed for much of the economic crisis. So who is choosing the board members or the CEO or even the chairman? Well, joining us today on NCAD Knowledge are two gentlemen who should be able to answer some of those questions. Luc Menel, who is the head of the UK practice, and Marc Sanglet Ferrier, who is the head of the French practice for Russell Reynolds, and you're uh, basically a board search company. We are. Okay. Um, thank you for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Uh, Luke, let me um, start by, by asking you, do you buy into the kind of the idea that maybe boards and their lack of governance, perhaps, or governance practice maybe had something to do with the crisis? Yes, I, I think boards hold some accountability. Some of the boards were staffed with individuals who had great branding understanding, were consumer specialists, but had no concept of how to read a balance sheet of a big financial services organization. However, consumers, governments, regulators, you know, we were all very happy to take the credit that was on offer. So I think we must put it in context. Um, Mark, was the same thing happening in France? I mean, boards in France operate a little differently than they, they do in the UK. The role of the chairman and the CEO, for example. Yes, one of the major differences between the UK and France is that in France you combine the role of chairman and CEO. It's more or less 60% of the situation. Um, in, there are specific situations where you split the role, chairman and CEO, usually when it's family-owned businesses, so the chairman represents the families and the CEO runs the business, or when you have big major shareholders and the rest is public, so sometimes you need another executive chairman uh, dealing with the shareholders. And also uh, when there is a transition between, uh, there's a transition, so usually the CEO becomes chairman and there is a new CEO and for a period of time, which might be two or three years, uh, you have a chairman and CEO and then they combine the roles. So it's quite different to the UK situation. How, how is that different? You find the roles are more split in the, in the UK. F far more split. So you have a non-executive chairman who will spend two to three days a week in a business at times. And then, so the chief executive runs the company and the non-executive chairman runs the board. A chairman and a CEO, what's the difference in the way you look for them? Clearly, a chairman needs to have a strong governance experience. And uh, you get uh, governance experience uh, when you have been in boards and when you have been exposed to various situations uh, in boards. So I would say that's the specific competency of, uh, uh, of, of, of a chairman. Then, of course, you need to have, uh, when it's a chairman and not CEO, a chairman who doesn't want to step into the shoes of the, C uh, the, shoes of the CEO. So this is clearly something we need to validate. Uh, the rest, it depends on the type of capability, the sectorial and geography competencies. The, the chief executive process is, is in some ways more straightforward. You want a leader for a business. Is it harder to find candidates for, I, I think this is more for the chairman, given the regulatory environment and the fact that most people sitting around the table are out for blood and ready to blame you and governance is king and, I mean, is it harder today? I wouldn't want to be a chairman of something. I mean, it's too much, too big a liability. Uh, our view is that the pool has shrunk a bit, but, but successful business people tend to want to remain engaged and stimulated. So being, for Sir Philip Hampton, being the chairman of the Royal Bank of Scotland, a nearly full-time job, he took that on as a stimulating, challenging, and perhaps quite tough assignment. I think the number of Philip Hamptons that were available has probably got smaller, but we have yet to fail to find a quality person to be a chairman or a chief executive, which tends to suggest, you know, successful people carry on wanting to do interesting things. Do, do you think that former managers can make good board members or, or good chairmen? I mean, in France, they, they seem to have more experience, more broad-based experience like that. You have to be a good manager to, to, to become a good chairman, but not all managers can become, uh, can, can, can become chairmen. So uh, there are qualities like self-awareness, uh, strategy, vision, governance. Again, um, you have to prove that you have this quality. Hmm. Sometimes successful chief executives who have been the master or mistress of all they survey in a company five, six, seven days a week find it more difficult to stand back and be a non-executive chairman spending one or two days a week with the business. They still want to run things. 
And that tends to be the area that most boards are concerned about. So what makes a great chairman or a great non-executive director? The really great chairmen are the ones who want to see their chief executive succeed, but they do it in a way which retains a framework of both governance and support with some challenge uh, that allows executive teams to flourish. I think what makes a, a non-executive director a great non-executive director is their mindset, independency mindset. You have to be really independent. So this means that you are ready. You can resign if you disagree. There are very few people who are able to resign, but we need to test that they are ready to do that. So the, their compensation must not be significant. Uh, their status is not dependent on being part of this board, and they must be. Uh, they must have energy enough and they must be willing to, to ask the tough questions uh, because what's sometimes missing is non-executive directors asking tough questions to the executive team and to the CEO. So in my view, that's the most important quality of a non-executive director. And what's happened over the last five to ten years is boards now go through annual evaluation. So traditionally, boards were these organisations which you know, when you got to be a non-exec director, you were almost beyond feedback. Now, annually, the chairman is assessed by the, no the senior independent director. The non-execs are given feedback by each other on each other. So we've seen a very different dynamic. I mean, you, you understand whether you're in the top quartile of a board performance or in the bottom quartile. And some of the bottom quartile performers will be asked very gently to perhaps finish after three years and not do six. Hmm. How many women have you placed? We are increasingly finding and placing um, good female non-exec directors. The issue, so our, our overall statistics are about 22% of in the last year of the, of the appointments we've done have been female. In numbers, that would be what, that, five, four, six? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Across, across uh, the UK and France only, that would be around um, 20 in terms of non-exec appointments. So, we, so, so it's significant numbers. The real issue is the supply of, of women willing to stay in a business environment to the level of finance director and chief executive. And that is a more complex issue than finding high quality business women for boards. Well, you mentioned from all over the world. I, yes. I, I would assume that there's a lot of swapping going on with um, mergers, acquisitions, the EU, borders going down, the internet. Is that? True, you're finding people are moving around a little bit more? Well, in France, for instance, 28% of the board members are not French, of the CAC 40 company. Mm, 28%. Uh, 28 which is, uh, which is quite, uh, which is quite, yes, which is quite uh, significant. I don't think that these numbers will go up uh, and it's considered as, as, as a good level. So there are some uh, very good consequences in terms of uh, understanding of the geographics and the market. But in, in, during crisis, it's more difficult because uh, right, when right. you have board members who live in the US, you have time zones. Also, uh, when you are quoted, uh, you have the legal environment, which is still national, you know, when it's in the UK. Uh, and so it requires from the chairman of the board to have really created a good team spirit uh, so that people have spent time all together, they know, they understand well all together, so that they can re react as a board and not to have the as a s part of the board doing the job and the other um, being outside of the decision process. You, you asked, Shelley, about the financial crisis. One of the feedback conclusions was that diverse boards had an issue around geographic spread. So if you have six to eight board meetings a year, you put that in your diary and you appear in the UK and you attend the board meeting. If you suddenly have a crisis and you need to be talking weekly, then you had an inner group of a board who happened to be in the country, and then you had an external group that were joining by conference call or video conference, and they felt that they were no longer part of this board and decisions were taken at speed that they weren't part of. Now that's something that chairmen and boards have to be aware of. Uh, and yes, today chairman, that's one of the main concerns, is really to make sure that everyone has the same level of information and, more importantly, the same level of understanding. So and that at the same time. And the, at the same time, exactly, at the same time. So, that, so it's a ch new challenge. So you're letting me easily ask my last question was, how do you see this changing as you go forward? I mean, things are only going to get more interconnected, I would think. 
uh, that must have a different challenge for you all. We see, and I think, I, the demands on non-executives, chairman, are greater than they were. So I think the real pressure on our business is to encourage and help nurture, to Mark's point, more younger, high-achieving executives to step onto boards as non-executive directors because the, the pool is smaller and with these geographic constraints, less around the, the accessibility with the internet and communications, but the, the sheer fact that if you're face-to-face -face with someone, it's a different thing to being on a video conference, means that experienced non-executive directors can only do now four to five roles. The days of eight or nine are over. So, so we must be very careful to, to, to encourage and nurture and develop younger, high quality individuals, both male and female, to take on these roles. You agree with that? Mm, I fully agree. And the trend is really the professionalization of, of, of the boards. Uh, so a few years ago, uh, boards were sort of club, and today it's really uh, hardworking sessions with people who feel responsible. So uh, it's a trend. Well, thank you both very much for being with us Hi. on NCAD Knowledge. Thank, thank you. you.